Happy Halloween, everyone. Today, we will be looking at a game that is themed for this time of year. And that game is... Castlevania 3. It is a game that was made in 1990, released in 1990, by Konami, and it is known as the last in the NES trilogy, and is the hardest of that of those three. Made as a prequel to the, uh, the first two games, where you control Simon Belmont's ancestor. Trevor Belmont, where he battles Dracula for the first time. I hope you like it, because I probably won't. Let's check it out. Once the game starts up, you get an opening that's like watching an old movie, i.e. the edge of the film on either side of the screen. Once the title appears, of course, via lightning, it scrolls past very slowly to reveal a backstory that sets the tone for the game pretty well. It's kind of like an origin story about how the Belmont family was shunned for having too much weird power, and they were the only ones to fight Dracula, of course. Typical story. But that's not important, the story. The game is what matters, and if it's good, then you don't really need to care about the story. Alright, now what's interesting is that with this game you can start, well with all of them, you can start by entering your name. I chose my name. And now it starts with Trevor facing facing his back to us with some lightning and then he turns around dramatically with his cloaked and then the kick-ass music begins. Once you get inside Dracula's castle via a scrolling screen, of course, Enemies await you, such as skeletons, bats, medusas, zombies, and hunchbacks.
Alright. Once you're done taking that little detour, you come to a bridge with a bunch of blue platforms. But be careful though, because if you touch the platforms, or jump onto them, like so, they will cause you to fall to your death. What's worse is that there are Medusa heads flying around, so eventually you're gonna take a hit. But once you're past that, you have zombies to deal with in this, what looks like a deserted town. Once you've survived that, you have hunchbacks to deal with. Three in a row! And once you've figured out how to get past them, you've got zombies attacking you that climb out of the ground. If you try and if you try to stay and fight them, they'll respawn infinitely. And what's worse is that there's bats thrown in for good measure. Once you get to a certain point, if you're not smart enough, you could downgrade your axe to a lousy throwing knife. It isn't all that big a deal, since the boss that you fight only takes about 10 hits with the dagger. That's assuming you've collected enough hearts to do it. After the final blow is struck upon him, he screams a deep rumble and collapses to the ground in a heap of broken marrow. And then you collect a red orb. The feature I really do like about this game, that was greatly needed in the rest of the series, or it was greatly needed anyway, is the ability to select where you want to go. Like you could go to the clock tower, or you could go to the forest. But if you go to the clock tower, then you can get something special, which is indicated by that skull right there. Now, when you get another character, you can switch to them by pressing select, which is a nice variety since you can choose which, um, they're, you know, have a different way to complete the stage. Now then, let's sum this masterpiece up. In conclusion, I will give Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse two thumbs up. I would have given it one and a half, due to its difficulty, but that's something I can look past. You know? And remember... I'll see you later.